the reason why I'm getting the f off and everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it. I don't give two but I am the woman in the now viral clip depicting her mid-meltdown aboard an American Airlines flight has now been identified as Tiffany Gomez, a 38-year-old uh, marketing executive. All passengers on the flight were forced to deplane after Gomez suggested something was unsafe about the flight. Gomez seemed genuinely afraid of whatever she thinks she saw on the back of the plane. She begged airport employees not to let it take off. I don't care if I'm ever gonna fly with y'all ever again. I want to know what happens to this flight right here. Do not let that flight leave. Being dead serious. Do not let that flight leave. Yesterday, Goma spoke out for the first time since the viral moment, apologizing for her actions. Let's watch. Well, it has been really comical for everyone, um, and I have highly enjoyed so many of the memes. On the flip side, it is very invasive and unkind. And I don't know what I would do without the love and support of my friends and family. They are loyal to a fault and I don't know what I did to deserve them. Um, sorry y'all. I hope that I can use this experience and do a little bit of good in the world and that is what I intend to do. I hope that you guys can accept my apology and I can begin to move on with my life. Users online are unsatisfied with Gomez's lack of explanation for her behavior. Um, some believe she's being forced to hide whatever it is that she saw. Quote, she sounded genuinely terrified of something she saw on the plane. Hashtag UFOs. <laughs> That's one perspective. Uh, here's my perspective. Sure. This woman was drunk. Um, she held up people for hours. Do, we, do to, we know that she was under the influence of alcohol? That's what the, uh, the police report the says. Police say, and that's what I'm betting was the case. Um, she held up this flight for hours on behalf of all those passengers and be on behalf of passengers everywhere. I <laughs> firmly reject her apology. <laughs> she should. I would. Ne if I was that airline, I would say you are never allowed to sit. We will. You cannot fly with us ever again. I would. I would. All airlines should. <laughs> she can take the frickin' bus for the rest of her life after that. And that, that was the lamest apology I've ever seen. Yeah, so like it, the memes are funny and oh, I've been harassed. You, like you can't, w w people think you can just get drunk in public and then imply that like she made, she came real close to, maybe she didn't actually commit a crime. She came real close to a false kind of police reporter, like you're calling it a bomb threat type deal. That's how they handled what she said. I, maybe it didn't technically cross any legal line, fine. But there have to be consequences for that kind of behavior. Shunning, no more flying. I mean, people, people need to get where they're going. You want to, you, there's no worse experience than getting on the plane, waiting, having to get off, right? Am yes, I, no, no worse experience. Okay, I, no I, I understand you're okay. being hyperbolic. Okay, I, I take your point. Let's just, let's just straw man this a little bit. Okay, let's say that everything you say is true, that you're right. That This is a society. <laughs> Control yourselves in public. Okay. Let's say that there's some, um, maybe there's alcohol abuse, but people also were wondering, you know, is there some mental instability? It, it seemed like even with alcohol, many people wouldn't think, allege that folks aren't real, um, that they're seeing things. There's some, there seems to be something kind of hallucinatory about it. Um, and do we have any sympathy for the idea that somebody might be having a mental health episode, whether or not it's alcohol induced? or fueled, mm -hmm. but having a mental health episode that happens to be caught online. So in addition to whatever charges you might face for obstructing this flight, calling it a bomb threat or whatever, you also are made famous on the internet at one of your lowest moments in a way that makes you feel compelled to give a public response. Do we have any sympathy for that? Well, look, I, I'm sympathetic with people who are struggling with Substance abuse, if that's what it is, or you know, have, or even you're right, having a otherwise healthy people can have a public can have a, a meltdown or something in public. And you're right, I agree with you that you know our ability now to capture everything on camera, I think, works toward the the cancellation, the social punishment of people who who don't deserve it, who just had a bad day. And I I don't like the idea that you know all of us on our worst day now could be that could be the end of your life if this happens in a even semi-public place, you know, parking lots or grocery stores, those kinds of things. This is different because this also 
uh, was deeply inconvenient. The word inconvenient is insufficient. Because I could have been on that plane. Well, no, I, mean, I, I have feel, places you know, to go. I mean, play, a plane is a <laughs> confined area. It's like it's not, you don't want to, you want to be on the plane for as little time as possible. Um, there are people traveling with children, you know, business, family, all sorts of things. It is so disruptive. To, to to do that, so you can have you can have a mental health episode in a lot of places, and be afford, you should be afforded some some grace because there, but for the grace of God, go all of us. Not on the airplane. Do you not on the airplane? She, Sorry. What, what do you make about this piece? Where people are asking, you know, like, you know, like isn't it an indictment of not our be, society? Not behind the wheel and not on an airplane. <laughs> it's like that. Well, what do you make of people who are saying that isn't it an indictment of our society that she should even feel compelled to make a public response? Did she need to? Should she have? I, I guess if I was her, I would have probably just embraced, I would have just not said it, or maybe issued a written up statement of, I am so sorry, and uh, this was awful. But even is that, is this, what does it say the way that she that's did, required? She did it in a clout-chasing way, to be perfectly clear. So correct. I want to I get to that she as well. She did it in a, in a, how can I make, how can I use this to launch myself to some greater sort of notoriety. So some right? people Am I reading into that? That's how it looked like to me. Well, no, that's what I wanted to get to next. I mean, I did I did want to get to this point because it it so much of the internet discourse, the Twitter discourse was, you know, should we be reflecting on what it means that she might a person in the situation who went viral at a low moment unintentionally now feels like they have to answer the public because of how famous they've become? As a result of simply being caught on video doing something. I mean, but she. I mean, she has to answer to the, again the the people she disrupted. Right, there but, might but, have been people but, who were scared watching that happen. Go, is there a bomb or something on the, the plane? Point, Are Robbie, the terrorists? She's not writing a letter to the other two hundred people in that plane or doing a TikTok well, to those people. Effectively, no way to do that. It's it's the it's the idea that she is having to answer to the millions upon millions of people who have now seen that video and have spent weeks trying to track down her identity, trying to figure out what she really saw. People who are supporting of her who were like, there really was a lizard man on the plane, let's get to the bottom of it, or hashtag UFO, whatever it is. You know, that, that's an interesting question. But let's let's get to your, your question about whether or not she is milking this for fame. She did seem to hint within her video that people should, quote, stay tuned, um, that there would be some kind of a something, a deal, a mental health. Uh, yeah, we don't want any of that from you. We just <laughs> want an apologist. <laughs> I, my actions were embarrassing, I'm humiliated, and they were terribly inconvenient to others, and I'm very sorry, and I will never do anything like this again. I'm so sorry, thank you, end of statement. So the Post says it's not immediately clear what project Gomas is, was uh, preparing to unveil or when, however, her video ended with the message, quote, join me on my journey of promoting positive mental health and standing That's, up against cyberbullying. <sighs> Standing up against, she's not a, well, uh, okay, yeah, she is a victim of cyberbullying, I'm sure to some degree, I'm sure she got death threats, I'm sure she got angry, but, but she did do a bad thing. Like, you can't get behind the wheel of a car drunk, crash it, and then Robbie, be like, she did oh, I had a mental health episode, sorry. She did not do something equivalent to driving drunk and hurting other people. You know, yes, it is inconvenient. I just was kept on the tarmac for, I think, three or four hours on my way back from uh, Boston a couple of weeks ago. I was very irritated. But there, there's this question, like, is are we getting disproportionate amounts of kind of punishment or public censorship or public cancellation because of the nature of viral moments that are unfair to individuals who are now having to answer to more people, have a higher platform, be vulnerable to more bullying than they would have if they just had to contend with the 200 people in that flight being very upset with them and being investigated by the police. Yeah, I generally agree with that, but I don't know, there's something about Having a bad, I, I felt the same way, you know, during COVID there used to be, there were a couple times, um, actually I was traveling once and um, it, people were, I, I struck up a, a conversation with somebody who'd been, who actually had been drinking heavily because their plane had been deplaned and they were all waiting and they'd been there forever and it was because there were some COVID non-compliant passengers, passengers who wouldn't mask or whatever and so they had to make everybody get off the plane and uh, even though, again, I'm, as you know, very sympathetic <laughs> to the will not be masked people, not on the plane. You could, that, that, that's imposing <laughs> suffering on innocent third-party bystanders. All right. Well, let us know what you think in the comments. 
and we'll let you know what's on rising tomorrow. That's it. That's it for us for today. But we will be back on Tuesday. We're just kicking off the week. We're just getting started. <laughs> it's uh, it's only Monday, so there's much much more to come. <laughs> be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. For those of you who prefer to listen while you're on the move, we're available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Mm. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.